Welcome back to another episode of Inward News. It's your boy Dre. And uh, a lot of people in high places are messing up this week. Boy, do I tell you. Affirmative action is going through some changes right now because, you know, Clarence Thomas is apparently a hating ass nigga. But uh, race has been removed from admission considerations due to Supreme Court ruling Thursday. Uh, affirmative action that you no longer have to care about somebody's race when thinking to, uh, what you call it, allow them into school. There's no more diversity numbers, I guess. I don't know what Clarence Thomas has against niggas, but that nigga don't want uh, interracial dating, uh, gay rights. Nigga don't want niggas to get into places or he don't want niggas to be forced into places that people are actively trying to shut us out of. That nigga Clarence Thomas is a, that that nigga might be the closest thing we got to a real life Uncle Ruckus. Cause a lot of shit this nigga benefited from, he's trying to remove. Like somebody, I, I wish I could remember the thread. Somebody on Twitter broke down how that nigga was affirmative action for literally everything in his career. And it was like, my nigga, are you serious? Never, uh, if he he made his way to the Supreme Court, but was like, yeah, if the nigga had a form of affirmative action for every step of the way, then that nigga is only there because of affirmative action. Not saying he's not credited or he, he can't get there off his own, you know, skill, but it's like affirmative action puts you in the fucking room, nigga. Like, what, what you doing? And, and the crazy thing is most admissions uh, don't even deal with niggas. It's mostly other people that need affirmative action. I think I see somewhere that's still like white women. Uh, what you call it? Experience the most because most people will hire a will hire like different colors before they hire a woman. So it's like white men, other men, white women, and then other women. But you know the women try to put themselves in. I'm not keeping up with world relations, but right now France is pissed. I don't know what what they did in France to piss them off, but France is the king of revolutions. Like, the niggas invented the guillotine because they wanted to get a king out of here. So, like, I don't know why the government of France would just be trying their folks like that. But whatever they did, they pissed off France. So, France been on, like, a week-long rampage. I think the niggas still riding today. Might still be riding when this episode comes out. But, like, yeah. Just look up France right now. Like, Google France. Google France riots. Like, Google everything France. Them, them, niggas, them niggas is going in right now. Like France, France don't mess around when it comes to riding, and, and that's it's actually quite hilarious because they get shit done. Their leaders are afraid of the people. An eight-year-old kid is now dead after the parents enrolled him in mixed martial arts classes. Uh, after paying a fourteen hundred dollar annual fee and one day of class, the child was killed by the instructor. Apparently, the instructors there are just like rough as shit, and the mom didn't know, or like I guess their reputation wasn't out. But yeah, after this kid died, a lot of people was just like, yeah, those guys are crazy. They do this, they do that. And like, bro, say something sooner. Because this kid is dead now. They, they said like, there's video of the kid crying. There's video of the kid like balled up. The instructor's like, if you keep crying like that, your mom won't come pick you up for a year. We got you for a year. And they're like, bro, bro. Yeah, that kid died. I think like one of the instructors kicked him and it just shocked his system like that kid couldn't survive anymore but yeah man if, if you know people are abusive like call that shit out man i don't understand oh and that was in china just forgot to say that yeah that was in china that wasn't in america that was a chinese thing so if you see somebody being abusive speak up elon put a limit on how much twitter folks can have and there's like a time limit or something, or not a time limit, but a post limit to address extreme levels of data scraping and system manipulation. We've applied the following temporary limits. Verified accounts are limited to reading 6,000 posts a day, unverified accounts to 600 posts a day, and new unverified accounts to 300 a day. You know, some niggas do spend a lot of time on social media. But when you have a, a website that is known for relaying information, known for real-time events known for like uh camaraderie of like group watching stuff like that it's basically a, a very publicized forum why are you limiting how much people can see on it that is the dumbest thing like i don't know if elon knows what he's doing which i mean we know he doesn't know what he's doing but i don't think he understands how bad it is because like 
nigga. Like, just all he had to do was buy the app and not do anything and he'd have been good. This man has been ruining this app ever since he got on it. And, and it's just like, my nigga, do you want to make money? Like, is that is that your goal? Is that is that what you want? Because if that's what you want, you're not you're not doing any of it right. So now everybody's on Twitter right now mad because like the amount of posts they can look at is all messed up. And it's like data limit uh, rate reading uh, reached or some shit like that. So everybody's like going insane because it's just like, nigga, you are ruining Twitter, which was literally just a app. Like it was it was what the person made it because there was no rules. There was no limits. There was nothing to it. Like there used to be a Twitter limits when it was like early on and it was, you know, too many niggas coming in at once. But now it's just like nigga, you're purposely restricting people's apps. And when you think about it, if somebody's like just scrolling, you're not thinking about how many posts you're looking at because nobody's clicking all the posts. Some people are just scrolling through the timeline. So if you're just scrolling through, not even really looking at it, just scrolling, you're wasting your limits. But yeah, Elon, get the fuck out of Twitter, man. This is how niggas promote their businesses. This is how I promote my business. Come on, nigga, stop fucking shit up. Now on to the all hiring segment. The black box is a company that like you know educates young children on black history you know age appropriate and they like work in the history until you know until they're able to handle the more serious stuff and it's just like it's a way to teach kids black history without you know going overboard without doing the most without going crazy so you know get at them if you want your kids to know their history growing up early if you don't all the stuff you don't know because there's more than just Black history more than civil rights, slavery, and uh, what you call it, Tulsa. But hell, most people don't know about Tulsa. So, come on, let's get, let's get at them. The Sharp Standard is an event planning service. Uh, they do all kinds of like events. You know, the planning of it, uh, weddings, birthdays, holidays, vacations, stuff like that. Not really vacations, but like you know, the big event with niggas come to eat. Like, that's what they do. They plan those, uh, tell you what to do, how to do them, how to set it up, how to make everything organized, venues and stuff like that. Uh, maybe catering. I think they can get catering, stuff like that. Dearest Decor Incorporated is event decorating. So the planners just kind of plan everything and the event decorators decorate everything. And if you get them, like if you book both companies and like get them to work together, they can do something together. They can make sure everything's taken care of from how it looks to how it flows to how it's done, how it's fed, all that. So if you want, you know, your account, if you want your event plan and your event decorated, hit up, you know, the Sharp Standard and Dearest Decor Incorporated. Norwood Trey is a photographer. He takes pictures. He takes pictures of things that happen. So if you are a black business or if you, if you just anybody and you want pictures taken, hit him up. He's gonna take those pictures for you. That's what a photographer is. They take pictures. Oh, and I think videography. I think he also does video, but you know, not many people really need videos. Well, not, not many normal people need videos. Businesses and events and stuff, those videos all day. But if you're just a regular person that wants some pictures, get out of them. S. Phillips Photography is a photography video studio in Columbus. Uh, they just got podcast equipment. So if you need that, if you need a place to take pictures, if you need your pictures taken, you need video, you need brand shoots, uh, birthday shoots, all that. They have a studio in Columbus. Uh, and if you got a podcast you want to record, you know, you can bring your own camera, but they do have their own equipment set up already. But, you know, if you just got your own equipment, you just need a space, you can go to them. That, that's fine. They're not going to judge you. They're, they're all right. They got that. You can still run out the space. That's it for this week. If you're a black business, you want to be promoted, or you know somebody that wants to be promoted in their black business, tell them to hit me up. Uh, Happy 4th of July. Enjoy those days off. Get your free food. I'm, uh, I'm about to go to my homeboy's house and eat. Bye.